Development of blood transfusion and artificial blood. When the hemoglobin level in the blood falls below 100 grams per liter or the hematocrit rate falls below 30%, red blood cell transfusion is considered. Delivery of one unit of blood is standard for hospitalized patients who are not bleeding. The results of this treatment are monitored by reassessing symptoms and hemoglobin concentration. More blood may be required in patients with poor oxygen saturation. Transfusions are also considered for people with symptoms of cardiovascular disease, such as chest pain or shortness of breath. In cases where patients have low hemoglobin levels but are cardiovascularly stable, parenteral iron is the preferred option for both efficacy and safety. First blood transfers. Before a blood transfusion, many examinations are carried out to ensure the quality, compatibility, and safety of the recipient of blood products. Today, a national blood policy is implemented in 70% of the countries, and 62% have special legislation covering blood transfusion safety and quality. Long before blood transfusions became available in medical applications, in various cultures, people saw blood as a substance with important regenerative properties. The idea of giving a new blood to improve the health of the patient is quite old, but until the modern age it remained only a legend. For example, in Homer's Odyssey epic, Odysseus animates the shadows in the underworld with the blood of a sacrificed animal and communicates with them. Two scientific developments suggesting the use of blood transfusion as a medical treatment were William Harvey's explanation of the blood circulation in our body, published in 1628, and Christopher Wren's invention of the syringe to inject substances intravenously in 1659. Physicians in England and France have started blood transfusions between animals. In 1666, Richard Lower performed the first successful transfusion between animals. On June 15, 1667, Jean-Baptiste Denis (1643–1704), the physician of Louis XIV, King of France, performed the first blood transfusion to man. When Dennis gave about 12 ounces 360 grams of blood from a lamb to a 15-year-old teenager who had been treated with leeches 20 times due to high fever, the patient quickly recovered. Soon Dennis made another successful transfer to a farmhouse. But the third and fourth transfusion patients did not survive. The third transplant patient, Baron Gustav Bond from Sweden, died a short time later. Dennis transfused calf blood to the mentally unstable Antoine Moroy in the winter of 1667. Moroy is dead. Moroy's wife claimed that Dennis was responsible for her husband's death and accused him of murder. Jean-Baptiste Dennis was acquitted in court, but quit medicine. After a while, it was found that Moroy actually died of arsenic poisoning, and his wife was found guilty. However, the court also decided to ban blood transfusions. In 1670, the Parliament of France, the Catholic Church and the Royal Academy of Sciences of England also made their own ban. Thus, the use of blood transfusion in medicine was stopped until the end of the 19th century. Discovery of blood groups. After the discovery of blood groups by the Austrian Karl Landsteiner 1868-1943, the way for a safe blood transfusion was opened. Landsteiner proved that blood from two incompatible blood groups causes a fatal immune response when mixed with each other. While working at the Vienna Institute of Pathology, he found the structural differences of the blood. In 1901, he showed that there are three blood groups in humans, according to the types of antigens that bind to the cell membrane in red blood cells. He named these groups A, B, and O in 1902, he found the AB group carrying both A and B antigens. Landsteiner, who also found the polio virus with Erwin Popper in 1911, described the M and N groups in 1927 and the rhesus RH factor, which was named after the monkey species he found in 1940. The RH factor was the source of reactions in the blood of the mother and baby that led to miscarriage, stillbirth or a fatal illness in the baby after birth. The work of Landsteiner, who received the 1930 Nobel Physiology or Medicine Prize for his inventions, also contributed significantly to the development of forensic medicine. Establishment of blood banks. 
Although the first transfusions had to be made directly from the donor to the recipient before coagulation occurred, over time, with anticoagulant and cooling of the blood, it was possible to keep the blood taken for days, paving the way for the establishment of blood banks. John Braxton Hicks conducted the first experiments with chemical methods to prevent blood clotting at St. Mary's Hospital in London in the late 19th century. However, his attempts to use soda phosphate were unsuccessful. The first indirect transfusion was made with diluted blood solution on 27 March 1914 by Belgian Dr. Albert Huston. In November of the same year, Argentine Dr. Louis Agote tried a new, less diluted solution. Both had used sodium citrate, an anticoagulant. The First World War served as a catalyst for the rapid development of blood banks and transfusion techniques. The first blood donation centre in the world was founded in London in 1921 by Percy Oliver, the secretary of the British Red Cross. Similar centres have been established in other cities such as Sheffield, Manchester and Norwich, and have gained international attention, expanding to France, Germany, Austria, Belgium, Australia and Japan. Alexander Bogdanov founded the first academic institution dedicated to the science of blood transfusion in Moscow in 1925. One of the first blood banks was founded by Frederick Duran Jorda in 1936 during the Spanish Civil War. 300 to 400 milliliters of extracted blood was mixed with 10% citrate solution in a modified Duran Erlenmeyer flask and stored in a sealed sterile bottle at 2 degrees Celsius under pressure. In 1937, Bernard Fantas, director of the Cook Hospital in Chicago, established the first hospital blood bank in the United States. The term, blood bank, was born when creating a hospital laboratory that stores chilled donor blood. Using blood plasma for transplantation instead of whole blood, too. It started with the use of liquid plasma in England at the beginning of World War II. In the 1940s, dried plasma packages were developed to replace fragile glass bottles, which made packaging, shipping and storage much easier. In the 1950s, Carl Walter and W.P. Murphy Jr. by developing plastic bags made of PVC, an opportunity was created for the safe and easy preparation of multiple blood components from a single unit of blood. Artificial blood. With the rapid development of treatment and surgery methods, especially with the replacement of open surgeries, closed laparoscopic surgeries and robotic surgery, blood demand is also decreasing compared to the past. However, in addition to the huge need for blood, problems such as the HIV epidemic accelerate artificial blood production research. Artificial blood is a product made to support the missing red blood cells. While real blood serves many different functions, artificial blood is only designed to transport oxygen and carbon dioxide throughout the body. Artificial blood can be produced in different ways, depending on the type of function, using synthetic production, chemical isolation, or recombinant biochemical technology. An ideal artificial blood product must first of all be fully compatible with the human body and absolutely safe. This means that different blood types are not important when using artificial blood. It also means that an artificial blood can be processed to remove all kinds of disease-causing agents such as viruses and microorganisms. Second, it must be able to carry oxygen throughout the body and release it where it is needed. Third, shelf life should be stable. Unlike donor blood, artificial blood can be stored for a year or more. However, natural blood can be stored for a maximum of one month before it spoils. Currently, there are two important types of products developed as blood substitutes. One is PFC per fluorocarbon, based and the other is hemoglobin-based products. A new video every day. Don't forget to like the video and follow the channel.